1902, Benjamin and Mary uh, Purnell roll in uh, in a covered wagon into uh, Benton Harbor, Michigan to start what they called the House of David. It didn't all happen at once. And as we go through time, there will be these people who are more of an entrepreneurial character that will join the colony. They had musicians, they had world-class entertainers and actresses and actors and vaudeville talent and uh, people that knew how to open up and build an amusement park. And that, that's when everything really got, went wild. That park grew and grew and grew. They uh, started erecting the amusement park. They expanded the railroad to the south side of Britain Avenue. They built the train depots. They started building the amphitheater buildings. They had a, a silent movie theater way back in the park, and, and they just went on from there. It grew extremely rapid in the early days, and by 1908, they had purchased land from Eastman Colonel Eastman, and they had this idea that they were going to build an amusement park. And they had over a thousand people that were talented uh, workers and craftsmen and, and stone makers and laborers, free labor. It was just uh, like building a city overnight. The amusement park was such a unique thing. And because Southwest Michigan uh, was a, a tourist mecca. Um, they had steamships on the Great Lakes that were coming here bringing passengers from Milwaukee and Chicago and, and uh, it was just a big tourist area with all the lakes and so the House of David captured that. About uh, 1930 or so, my dad lost his job up in Pennsylvania. My mother, uh, she was raised there. She called the, up the House of David to ask if they needed someone to work in the machine shop. They said yes. Yeah, the House of David amusement park was ran only by members of the, of the colony. They had their own guys uh, like Lloyd Dallager and uh, uh, Earl Boyer Smith in the very beginning uh, driving the trains. My earliest memory is wanting to drive the train, and eventually I wound up being able to do that. Now, originally, the park tried to open up in May of 1908. They tried a few trial runs to see that they did. When they purchased it, they opened up a small little loop. It was right on the north side of Britain Avenue. It was just something just like, hey, you know, it's a small little novelty, it's something there. They started doing more uh, their shows for a few of the members. I remember everything about those trains. I, and I can still even hear it in my head when they get to the little crossing guard at one of the bridges and there'd be a little dirt path that went across there. Those trestle bridges added a beautiful view. The west one was over 300 feet long and about 22 feet in the air. When I think about the magic, it's the people. Definitely the people, because everybody was having a good time and everybody had a smile on their face. And there was so much laughter and chatter and, you know, and people would just, it, you know, it was just an amazing, such an amazing feeling of togetherness. There was a lot more togetherness at that time. So there was like never a stranger. I mean, the park might've been full of people from everywhere, but you were all doing the same thing and you were all enjoying the same thing. People, they flocked in. They, they came from all over the world uh, to feel and experience this really unique amusement park slash music mecca that went on for 70 years. To watch the last two films in this series on Amazon Pay-Per-View, go to houseofdavidfilms.com or scan the QR code below.